Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, live from the Las Vegas Desert Inn and Stardust, the Ed Sullivan Show. What do you get when a stickler for rules and morals like Ed Sullivan meets a free-spirited singer who wants creativity freedom? Short answer, a disaster. Despite the fact that Ed Sullivan was a big name in hosting his own television show, he was not afraid to bump heads with some of the finest singers of entertainment. I am on my, on my side, the Rolling Stones. Bo Diddley. He was a pioneering figure in the world of rock and roll, known for his distinctive rhythm and innovative guitar work. Born Ellis McDaniel, Diddley carved out a unique niche in the music industry with his infectious beats and dynamic stage presence. But when he and Ed Sullivan came face to face, the host hated the singer's guts. And this is why. In 1955, Bo Diddley was invited to perform on The Ed Sullivan Show, a highly prestigious platform that offered artists unparalleled exposure to a broad audience. This invitation was a significant opportunity for any performer as the show was a mainstay of American television and a critical gateway to mainstream success. However, the appearance would become a memorable and somewhat controversial episode in Diddley's career. Prior to his scheduled performance, Bo Diddley was instructed to play 16 Tons, a popular song of the time originally performed by Tennessee Ernie Ford. The song, with its soulful lament about the struggles of coal miners, was a staple of the era and resonated with many viewers. This choice was likely made by the show's producers, or Ed Sullivan himself, who had a reputation for favoring material that was broadly appealing and inoffensive to the show's diverse audience. The request for Diddley to perform this song rather than one of his own compositions may have been an attempt to present him in a more conventional light, aligning with the tastes and expectations of mainstream viewers. However, when Bo Diddley took the stage, he made an unexpected decision. Instead of performing 16 tons, he launched into his own hit song, Bo Diddley. This track was vibrant and full of life, featuring the characteristic Bo Diddley beat that would become iconic. It was a bold choice, reflecting Diddley's commitment to his artistic identity and his desire to showcase the music that defined him as an artist. However, the reaction from Ed Sullivan and the show's producers was not favorable. They were reportedly upset by Diddley's deviation from the agreed-upon program. In the tightly controlled environment of live television, adhering to the script was considered crucial, and Diddley's decision to play his own song was seen as a breach of agreement and a lack of respect for the show's authority. Sullivan, known for his conservative stance and desire for control over his show's content, was particularly displeased. As a result, Bo Diddley was not invited back to the show. Bob Dylan. When it came down to poetic lyrics and folk singing, Bob Dylan is the name that came to mind. He was also known for pushing boundaries and addressing controversial issues in his music. However, soon enough on the Ed Sullivan show, he would show once more just how opinionated he really was. In 1963, Dylan was invited to appear on The Ed Sullivan Show. The opportunity was a significant one, offering Dylan the chance to reach a national audience and further establish his burgeoning career. However, the appearance turned out to be a notable and contentious episode in the history of the show and Dylan's career. Dylan planned to perform his song, Talkin' John Birch Paranoid Blues, a satirical piece that humorously criticized the extreme right-wing John Birch Society. The Society was known for its anti-communist stance and conspiracy theories, and Dylan's song used irony and wit to poke fun at their views. The lyrics portrayed a paranoid character who sees communist threats everywhere, reflecting Dylan's critique of McCarthyism and extreme political paranoia. When Dylan arrived at the studio for the show's rehearsal, he performed Talkin' John Birch Paranoid Blues as planned. However, this choice quickly became a point of contention. The show's producers and network executives were concerned about the song's controversial content, fearing it might offend viewers or lead to backlash. They were particularly worried about the potential political implications of the song's satirical portrayal of the John Birch Society, as well as the broader political climate of the time. As a result, Dylan was asked to choose a different song for his performance. The show's producers suggested that he play a less contentious piece, 
one that would not stir up controversy or provoke a negative reaction from the audience. This request placed Dylan in a difficult position, as he had come prepared to deliver a specific message through his performance. Unwilling to compromise his artistic vision or the integrity of his message, Dylan refused to perform another song. Rather than acquiesce to the demands of the network, he chose to walk off the set, effectively canceling his appearance on the show. The Birds the Birds were an iconic American rock band celebrated for their innovative fusion of folk and rock music. Their sound, characterized by jangly guitars and rich vocal harmonies, resonated with the youth of the 1960s and helped define the burgeoning folk rock genre. Hits like Mr. Tambourine Man and Turn, Turn, Turn not only topped the charts but also captured the spirit of a generation seeking change and new forms of expression. When they were invited to perform on The Ed Sullivan Show, they jumped at the chance to showcase their sound and talents once more. However, the band's experience on the show was far from smooth and is remembered as a frustrating and challenging event for all involved. The issues began even before the cameras started rolling, with technical problems and general disorganization setting the stage for a less than stellar performance. One of the most significant issues the birds faced was related to the sound system. In the mid-1960s, television studios were not always equipped to handle the unique technical requirements of rock bands which relied heavily on electric instruments and sophisticated sound setups. The birds, with their complex vocal harmonies and Roger McGuinn's distinctive 12-string Rickenbacker guitar, needed precise audio balancing to deliver their signature sound effectively. On the day of their appearance, however, the sound system at the Ed Sullivan Show failed to meet these needs. The band's instruments and vocals were not mixed properly, resulting in a sound that was uneven and poorly balanced. This technical shortcoming was particularly problematic for the birds, as their music's intricacies required clarity and precision. The muddled audio detracted from their performance, making it difficult for the television audience to appreciate the full depth and quality of their music. Compounding the sound issues was a general sense of disorganization surrounding the band's appearance. This disorganization could have included a range of logistical problems, such as miscommunications about which songs would be performed, unclear timing for their set, or even improper setup of their equipment. Such chaos can be particularly frustrating for musicians who rely on precise coordination and preparation to deliver a polished performance. For the birds, who were already dealing with the pressure of performing live on a highly watched television show, these disorganized circumstances only added to the stress. It's likely that the band felt unprepared and unable to present their best work, which would naturally lead to dissatisfaction and tension. The difficulties did not end with technical and logistical issues. There was also friction between the band and Ed Sullivan, as well as the show's producers. The Ed Sullivan Show was known for its conservative and family-friendly approach, aiming to cater to a broad audience. Sullivan himself was a somewhat rigid figure, with a specific vision for how acts should present themselves on his stage. This approach often clashed with the more relaxed and rebellious attitudes of rock bands like The Birds. Sullivan and his team had high expectations for professionalism and decorum, expecting performers to adhere closely to planned schedules and scripts. Any deviation, whether due to technical hiccups or differences in style, could be seen as unprofessional or disrespectful. For the birds who embodied a counter-cultural ethos and were part of a movement that often challenged traditional norms, this environment may have felt restrictive and stifling. The band's perceived attitude and the less-than-ideal conditions of their performance might have led Sullivan and his producers to view them as difficult or uncooperative. The technical problems, combined with any potential differences in demeanor or expectations, created a situation where neither side was particularly pleased with the outcome. The aftermath of the Bird's appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show was marked by mutual dissatisfaction. The band, frustrated by the technical issues and the overall disorganization, likely felt that they had been unable to present themselves in the best light. On the other hand, Sullivan and his team, accustomed to a high standard of polished performances, may have been disappointed by the perceived lack of professionalism or preparation. Elvis Presley, often referred to as the king of rock and roll, 
Elvis Presley was one of the most influential and charismatic performers of the 20th century. His unique blend of rock, country, and rhythm and blues, combined with his dynamic stage presence, made him a sensation across the United States and beyond. However, his rise to fame in the mid-1950s also sparked considerable controversy, particularly concerning his performance style, which included provocative hip movements that some perceived as inappropriate. When Elvis Presley first emerged on the national scene, his performances were characterized by energetic and often suggestive dance moves. His gyrating hips and uninhibited stage presence were unlike anything many American audiences had seen, especially on mainstream television. These movements, paired with his good looks and sultry voice, quickly made him a favorite among teenagers, but raised eyebrows among more conservative viewers, parents, and media critics. The Ed Sullivan Show, known for its family-friendly content, was a major platform for entertainers at the time. Ed Sullivan himself was seen as a gatekeeper of American entertainment standards. He had a reputation for being cautious about the content and performances allowed on his show, seeking to maintain a broad appeal and avoid offending his diverse audience. When Presley was booked to appear on The Ed Sullivan Show, there was a considerable amount of concern and debate about his performance style. Sullivan and his producers were wary of Presley's suggestive hip movements, fearing that they were too provocative and potentially inappropriate for a primetime television audience. The concern was that Presley's physicality, particularly his hip gyrations, might be seen as indecent or too sexual for the era's conservative sensibilities. Despite these reservations, Presley's first appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show... And now, ladies and gentlemen... Yes, that's right, Elvis Presley! ...on September 9, 1956, was a massive success, drawing an estimated 60 million viewers over 80% of the television audience at the time. However, Sullivan and his producers, likely responding to the initial concerns and some public outcry, decided to implement a specific filming policy for his third appearance on January 6, 1957. During this performance, Sullivan and his team decided to film Elvis Presley from the waist up, effectively censoring his lower body movements. This decision was a direct response to the controversy surrounding his dance style. By focusing the camera only on his upper body, the show aimed to mitigate any perceived indecency while still capitalizing on Presley's immense popularity. This move was a compromise, allowing Presley to perform while addressing the concerns of more conservative viewers and critics. However, Presley did not like that one bit and felt Sullivan was a bit too serious and harsh on him. He was used to a bit more freedom when he performed on stage, and so the tension between the two was palpable, even during the shooting of the performance. It is no surprise, though, that Elvis known for being lively and free, and Sullivan known for being a buttoned-up sticker, would not mix well. The Doors the Doors were a seminal American rock band of the 1960s, known for their enigmatic frontman Jim Morrison, distinctive sound-blending rock, blues and psychedelia, as well as their provocative and often poetic lyrics. As one of the most influential and controversial bands of their era, The Doors captured the spirit of the countercultural movement with their music and performances. Their 1967 hit Light My Fire became an anthem of the time, blending Morrison's deep, seductive vocals with Robbie Krieger's iconic guitar riff. In September 1967, The Doors were invited to perform on The Ed Sullivan Show. For a band known for pushing boundaries, this appearance was both a significant opportunity and a potential minefield, given the show's conservative standards and broad family audience. Ed Sullivan and his producers were particularly cautious about content that might be considered inappropriate or controversial, especially regarding references to sex, drugs, and rebellion, all of which were topics frequently associated with rock music of the time. Ahead of their performance, the Doors were asked to alter a specific line in their song, Light My Fire. The original lyrics included the phrase, Girl, we couldn't get much higher, which contained a subtle but clear reference to drug use, particularly in the context of the era's burgeoning counterculture and the increasing prominence of psychedelic substances. The show's producers, aiming to avoid any potential controversy, requested that Morrison sing Girl, 
we couldn't get much better instead. This change was intended to eliminate any reference to drug use and ensure that the performance adhered to the network standards for family-friendly content. The request put the doors in a challenging position. On the one hand, appearing on The Ed Sullivan Show was a prestigious opportunity that could significantly boost their visibility and mainstream appeal. On the other hand, altering their lyrics meant compromising their artistic integrity, a core value for the band and especially for Morrison, who was known for his poetic approach to songwriting and his disdain for censorship. When the moment of the live performance arrived, Jim Morrison made a decision that would become iconic. Despite the prior agreement and the network's request, he sang the original lyrics, Girl, we couldn't get much higher. Girl, we couldn't get much higher. This defiant act was subtle, just a single word change, but its implications were significant. By choosing to sing the unaltered line, Morrison and The Doors stood firm on their artistic expression. Even in the face of potential backlash from one of the most influential figures in television, the reaction from Ed Sullivan and the show's producers was immediate and severe. They were reportedly outraged by Morrison's decision to ignore their directive. Following the performance, a producer informed the band that they had blown it and would never be invited back to the show. Jim Morrison's casual response, hey, we just did the Sullivan show, underscored his and the band's nonchalant attitude towards the incident, further infuriating Sullivan. Buddy Holly and the Crickets Buddy Holly and the Crickets were pioneers of rock and roll in the late 1950s, known for their distinctive sound that blended rockabilly, rhythm and blues, and innovative guitar work. With hits like That'll Be the Day and Peggy Sue, they had a significant influence on future generations of musicians. Their appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show was highly anticipated, as the show was a crucial platform for reaching a wide American audience. However, their experience on the show was marred by a series of misunderstandings and technical issues, leading to a tense and memorable interaction with Ed Sullivan himself. From the outset, Buddy Holly and the Crickets faced technical difficulties that hampered their performance. The sound equipment provided by the show's producers was not up to the standards the band was accustomed to. As a group known for their meticulous attention to sound quality and musical precision, any issues with the equipment were particularly frustrating. Poor sound mixing or malfunctioning equipment could make it difficult for the band to deliver their best performance and could negatively affect the audience's perception of their music. Another point of contention arose regarding the choice of songs. For their appearance, the band intended to perform their energetic hit, Oh Boy. However, Sullivan and his producers expressed concerns about the song's suitability for the show's conservative audience, preferring something more subdued. Holly and the Crickets were determined to perform the song, believing it would showcase their unique style and appeal to the younger viewers who were a growing part of the rock and roll fan base. Adding to the strain was an incident during the introduction of the band. Sullivan reportedly introduced them incorrectly, referring to them as Buddy Hollis and the Crickets, instead of Buddy Holly and the Crickets. And now, oh boy, with Buddy Holly and his Crickets. This mistake, whether intentional or accidental, was seen by Holly as dismissive and disrespectful. In an industry where branding and recognition were crucial, such a misstep could be perceived as undermining the band's identity and professionalism. Despite the technical problems and the dispute over the song choice, Buddy Holly and the Crickets went ahead with their performance of Oh Boy! They delivered a spirited rendition, showcasing Holly's distinctive vocal style and the band's energetic musicianship. However, the performance did not go smoothly due to the ongoing issues with sound equipment, and Holly was visibly frustrated by the situation. After the performance, Sullivan reportedly approached Holly with a pointed remark. I guess you're not as good as you thought you were. This comment, whether intended as a criticism of the performance or a reflection of Sullivan's displeasure with the band's defiance over the song choice, was perceived as dismissive and insulting. Holly, known for his quiet but firm demeanor, likely took this as an affront to his professionalism and talent. This encounter between Buddy Holly and the Crickets and Ed Sullivan is remembered as a significant and somewhat contentious moment in the history of The Ed Sullivan Show. The Rolling Stones One of the most iconic and enduring rock bands, 
the Rolling Stones emerged from the British invasion of the 1960s with a raw and rebellious energy that captivated audiences around the world. Known for their blues-influenced rock sound and the charismatic, sometimes provocative stage presence of lead singer Mick Jagger, the band quickly became emblematic of the counterculture movement. When they were invited to perform on The Ed Sullivan Show, it was both a major opportunity and a potential clash of values. Ed Sullivan, as the host of one of the most popular television shows in America, was very conscious of the image and content presented to his wide, family-oriented audience. The Rolling Stones, with their bad boy image, long hair, and suggestive lyrics, represented a significant departure from the clean-cut and conservative acts Sullivan typically preferred. Sullivan was particularly concerned about the band's song, Let's Spend the Night Together, which he felt contained suggestive content that was inappropriate for his show's family-friendly format. The lyrics, Let's Spend the Night Together, were seen as overtly suggestive and potentially scandalous, especially in the conservative social climate of the 1960s. To mitigate any controversy, Sullivan and his producers insisted that the Rolling Stones change the lyrics to, Let's Spend Some Time Together. This alteration was meant to downplay any sexual connotations and make the song more palatable for the television audience. So here's the first appearance of the Rolling Stones. Reluctantly, the Rolling Stones agreed to the change, understanding the importance of appearing on such a widely watched program. However, during their live performance, Mick Jagger made his displeasure clear in a subtle but pointed way. As he sang the altered lyrics, Let's spend some time together. Jagger exaggerated an eye roll, a gesture that did not go unnoticed. This small act of defiance was Jagger's way of expressing his frustration with the censorship and the pressure to conform to mainstream expectations. It was a visible display of the band's discontent with having to sanitize their music to appease television censors. The gesture, while brief, carried a weight of rebellion and dissatisfaction encapsulating the larger cultural clash between the establishment and the emerging counterculture. Ed Sullivan, who valued decorum and respect for his show's standards, was not amused by Jagger's behavior. The eye roll, combined with the band's overall image and attitude, reinforced Sullivan's concerns about the Rolling Stones' suitability for his program. Sullivan had a reputation for being a disciplinarian, with a strong preference for controlling the content and presentation of acts on his show. He often took offense to performers who did not adhere strictly to his guidelines, or who displayed what he perceived as a lack of respect for his platform. As a result of Jagger's eye roll and the band's general demeanor, Sullivan reportedly expressed displeasure with the group. He viewed their actions as a deliberate flouting of his authority and an attempt to undermine the show's family-friendly image. This incident contributed to Sullivan's dislike of the Rolling Stones, as he saw them as emblematic of a new, unruly, and potentially corrupting influence in popular culture. The tension between the band's rebellious spirit and Sullivan's conservative standards made them an uncomfortable fit for the show. 